What are the states known for? When people think about a specific state, what is the first thing that comes to mind? An event, a location, activity, a person? We all have preconceived ideas, vibes, and experiences about different places, towns, cities, and states, countries even. I asked a simple question on Facebook, the community tab on YouTube, and I did a Google survey where I asked what is Texas known for? There were about 25 different things that kept popping up more than any other ones. In today's video, I'm gonna list the top 10 and I'm gonna do a little deep dive into each one of those. I'll also add some of the ones that didn't make the top 10 towards the end of the video, so stick around for that. So that's what we're doing today. We're taking a look at Texas. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Number 10, barbecue. So this is in no particular order, but barbecue is just Texas. I mean, Texas is known for barbecue. There are other places that are known for barbecue, but mostly they're cities like Kansas City barbecue, Nashville's known for barbecue, St. Louis, even Lexington, North Carolina. But the entire state of Texas is known for barbecue. And it's not just a summer thing like you'd find in California. Barbecue gets served pretty much for every occasion. Parties, marriages, funerals, graduations, Christmas. It's a way of life in many parts of Texas. In different parts of Texas, they're kind of known for different types of barbecue. Central Texas barbecue is when the meat is given a dry rub with spices and cooked over oak wood using indirect heat. East Texas is known for slow cooked barbecue. South Texas uses thick dripping sauce. West Texas barbecue, they always use mesquite wood. Some people say the four categories of meat are cowboy, meat market, East Texas, and Mexican barbacoa. Number nine, the friendship state. So that is very true here in Texas. People are very friendly. Even though Texas, like state name, is the Lone Star State, they have a reputation for being very friendly and inclusive. A few years back, there was a study about the different stereotypes from the different states. According to the survey, native Texans are the most genuine, friendly people you will ever meet on average. In 2019, Texas was ranked fourth in the nation for being one of the friendliest states. Number eight, country music. Yeah, I could totally see that one. The state's famous for traditional singers like George Jones, Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, Barbara Mandrell. These were all household names in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, and are often referred to as classic country. That's just scratching the very surface of that. There are too many great country western singers to even get into in this video. And they all seem to write songs about Texas too. Take Me to Texas, God Bless Texas, Yellow Rosa Texas. If you're gonna play in Texas, blame it on Texas, and Texas on my mind. Country music from Texas has been popular since the spread of the whole cowboy thing in the late 1800s. But yeah, Texas and country music, that's a no-brainer. Number seven, the Alamo. Everybody knows about the Alamo and everybody knows it has a basement that's filled with stolen bicycles. The Alamo is located in San Antonio. I was there just, I don't know, maybe seven, eight months ago. And this is one of the most well-known monuments in the state of Texas. Remember the Alamo is a famous cry from the Texas Revolution against Mexico. Now the Alamo was built by the Spanish in 1744 and was originally made up of a sanctuary and surrounding buildings. And they basically used it for educating Native Americans about the Catholic religion and Christianity. In February of 1936, the Mexican army started a siege on the Alamo for 13 days. They blocked off the water supply through the irrigation ditches that led into the complex. The siege ended on March 6 when the Mexicans were victorious in the Battle of the Alamo. This was a very historic battle in the Texas Revolution. Over 4 million people visit the Alamo every year. Number six, the Dallas Cowboys. Here's another easy one. I would have thought this right away, even if I wasn't a football fan. I'm not a fan of the Dallas Cowboys, but I know most people associate Texas with the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are one of the most well-known sports teams in the world of any sport. The Dallas Cowboy franchise was granted on January 28th, 1960. They've won five Super Bowls, which ties them for third place with the San Francisco 49ers. They're also the wealthiest team in the NFL. It's estimated that their value is a about $4 billion. Number five, NASA and the space program. Yep, everybody knows Houston, Texas is known as Rocket City. It played a big part in the space race back in the 1960s and it continues to. Stop typing, I'm just kidding, it's not Rocket City, it's actually considered Space City, that's their nickname. Rocket City is actually Huntsville, Alabama. All right, be honest, who was leaving the comment? Anyway, Texas has a long history with NASA and the space race. Everyone knows those famous words, Houston, we have a problem. This is a famous but slightly 
off quotation from a radio communication between Apollo 13 astronauts and NASA Mission Control in Houston. He said, Houston, we have a problem, but really he didn't say that. The actual quote is, okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. Not much of a difference, but I have to bring it up or somebody else will in the comment section. I don't know if it's still the same way, but if your payment didn't go through on Netflix, you got an email that read, Houston, we have a problem. Webster, Texas is home to the Johnson Space Center and has the Air Flight Control Center for the NASA Space Program. The Space Center has 100 buildings and constructed on 1,600 acres in the Clear Lake area of Houston. And that's how it got its nickname, Space City, in 1967. Number four, the San Jacinto Monument is located on the site of the last battle fought in the war for Texas independence and stands taller than the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. after some Texas shenanigans. That's right, Texas wanted this monument and they wanted it to be really tall, but the federal government was giving up some money for it, so they said, fine, you just can't be taller than the Washington Monument. So what Texas did, they submitted the plans for the San Jacinto Monument and they didn't include the base. So the federal government said, signed off on this thing. Well, then Texas went along and added a base to the bottom of the monument that made it taller than the Washington Monument. Everything's bigger in Texas. It is about 16 miles east of downtown Houston, and the monument is topped with a 220-ton star that commemorates the site of the Battle of San Jacinto. It was built between 1936 and 1939 and dedicated on April 21st, 1939. It is the world's tallest masonry column. By comparison, the Washington Monument is 554.612 feet, which is the tallest stone monument in the world. Visitors can actually take an elevator up to the top of this thing. The monument was completed in exactly three years and cost only $1.5 million. That would be close to $32 million in today's money. Number three, the JFK assassination. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated on November 22nd, 1963 at 12.30 p.m. while riding in a motorcade in Dallas during a campaign visit. The president was taken to Parkland Memorial Hospital but was pronounced dead at 1 p.m. He was shot in the neck and head. He was only 46 years old. By 2.15, Lee Harvey Oswald, a new employee at the Book Depository, was arrested for the JFK assassination. Two days later, on November 24th, Oswald was murdered by local nightclub owner and police informant Jack Ruby at Point Blank Range on live television let the dude in there. Now everyone knows all of these things. There's a lot of conspiracies that go along with it. And I think my favorite thing I've seen in a long time is just last year, not a few months back maybe, some of those QAnon people, they all gathered there and they thought President Kennedy's son was going to come back from the dead and lead the country. He's been dead for 20 years, but he was going to come back to life or he was hiding on a deserted island, and he was coming back to Dealey Plaza to lead the country in the right direction. Yeah, it's a thing. But for many people, that's the first thing they think about when they think about Texas. That's kind of strange, I think. That one I don't get. I mean, it's very important, and it's a you know horrific event in American history, but I don't associate it really with Texas, as, you know, even though it happened there. I guess I should say I can think of so many more things I would think of before I would think of the JFK assassination. Number two, oil. The discovery of oil in 1901 at the Spindletop Field in Beaumont, Texas was the beginning of the Texas oil boom that stretches to today. Yeah, they're still pulling oil out of the ground in Texas. On January 10th, 1901, an enormous geyser of oil exploded from a drilling site at Spindletop Hill, a mound created by an underground salt deposit located near Beaumont in Jefferson County in southeastern Texas. This thing reached a height of about 150 feet into the air and produced close to 100,000 barrels a day. These days, Texas produces about a million barrels a day, a little bit over. The drilling began at Spindletop in October of 1900, and by early January 1901, they had reached a depth of 1,000 feet. Oil kind of pushed this country in the right direction. The abundance of oil found in Texas would go on to fuel the expansion of shipping and rail industries, as well as the development of new innovations for the time, like automobiles and airplanes that came around a little later. These days, Texas is very much an energy, not just oil, it's a very much an energy state. But a lot of people got rich on oil in Texas over the decades. The oil in Texas has been talked about in movies, documentaries, books, songs, and even claymation. Yeah, one time uh, Gumby went out to Texas and he hit oil. It was weird. All right, before we get to number one, here's a few that didn't make the top 10 that are pretty important. 
San Antonio Spurs, the basketball team from San Antonio. The San Antonio River Walk was brought up a lot. Not a person, place, or thing, but I guess a state of mind. A lot of people kept saying bigotry. Uh, I don't get it. I've never got that from Texas. Maybe their politicians have made some decisions that give them that vibe, but the people aren't like that. I've never really picked up on that. Now, saying that, I'm sure there's tons of examples anyone can give of something like that happened, but in my experience, it's not like that, but everyone's got other experiences. Chili showed up a lot. The heat. Little catchphrases like don't mess with Texas. Cowboy boots and rodeos. Those also showed up, but not as much as the 10 on this list, which I think is strange. I would have put rodeos videos in between Sanya Central Monument myself. All right, for number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. All right, on to number one. And number one, ranching and cattle. That's right, one thing Texas is truly known for is ranches and longhorn cattle. You see longhorn cattle and you instantly think of Texas. The University of Texas is called the Longhorns. Cattle ranching has been around for centuries and it all started when Christopher Columbus introduced Spanish cattle to Santo Domingo, now known as the Dominican Republic. It obviously eventually made its way to the United States mainland and now it's big business. It's another one of those things that really helped move this country along. Texas has over 130 million acres of land dedicated to farming. The Texas cattle industry has more acres of farmland than 48 states in total size. The cattle industry provides about 12 billion in revenue by cash receipt each year. 14% of Texans, one out of every seven roughly, is working in a job that is related to agriculture in some way. Yeah, but those longhorn cattle, that's just a weird looking animal. I mean, those horns are just amazing all right that's today's video let me know in the comment section below which one you'd like to see next everybody have a great day be nice to each other